Have you ever read two series and wondered, which one is better? Well, today, let's figure that out. Welcome to the Sanders Review. My name is Caleb Sanders. I'm a teacher, educator, have my master's degree in history, and love all things nerdy and story related. And today, I want to do a versus battle between two lit RPG series that I have come to really enjoy and love. Uh, and that is He Who Fights With Monsters and Dungeon Crawler Carl. If you like fantasy or you really like the lit RP genre, you probably have heard of these two series at some point. And they both, even though if you base it off of the very first book, I would say Dungeon Crawler Carl, Carl would take it hands down because that hands down, I would say, is a much more refined book than the first book of Hume Fights with Monsters. But as the series progress in to the point they're written now, um, it becomes a much more even match. Although He Who Fights with Monsters has 11 books in the series, Dungeon Crawler Carl, Carl is at six, I believe. So, but that still doesn't mean that we can't look at their strengths and weaknesses and see at this point which one of these series, uh, <clears throat> in my <clears throat> humble opinion, is the better one. It shouldn't need to be said, but this is my personal opinion, so don't come at me if you disagree with things, or actually do come at me just in a nice, easy, conversational way to tell me where you disagree with me, and then I can correct you. And also, spoilers will be included. Our first category to see which one of these two series takes it is in world building. Now, He Who Fights With Monsters is a series that really, if you jump into it, it starts you off smack in the middle of the the world of Palamastus, you figure out very soon that that is where you are. It takes a little while to figure out where, you, where you're at. But you follow the main character, Jason Asano, as he comes to understand and realize and fall in love with this world, uh, the world of Greenstone, the world of the magic system, the world of the monster system, with the essences, with just everything going on. It is a book where uh, you follow. It's a lit RPG, so it's very straightforward in discovering. He starts off in an area where it's lower and gradually builds to where things are harder. And that's pretty standard. But I would say that the author, Travis Deverell, he does an amazing job, not only in the first arc, but in the second arc back on Earth, and in the third arc back again at Palamastus, you just have a world building that just expands more and more and more. And that is absolutely amazing. Now, on the other hand, Dungeon Crawl... Craw Dungeon Crawler Carl, I'm going to get tripped on that a lot tonight, is a series that you have a main character and his uh, animal companion, we'll just say at this point, that gets sucked into this alien invasion world where you are in this dungeon trying to survive, going through a dungeon crawler where, again, you start off weak and you gradually grow stronger and you get to know the alien species. You get to know this fantasy world system with everything as entailed. And I would say that something I appreciate about both of these series is that both of them has whimsical elements, but both also heavily goes into like horror elements. I would say Dungeon Crawler Carl goes even more so into the horror element, but in terms of world building, I think anybody who objectively looks at these two series should be able to say that He Who Fights With Monsters just has a better amount and ability to world build. So the first point goes to He Who Fights With Monsters. Our second category is going to be in prose and writing style. Now this is something that you can compare two authors and you have very distinct styles, but I would say objectively you can read two series and be able to see where which one is a little more engaging. And again, it's very subjective. Uh, he Who Fights With Monsters is a book that is very whimsical at times and gets into some heavy elements, but I would say you have very good descriptions. There's very natural conversations that take place, but there are some weaknesses. For example, throughout almost the entirety of the series, all 11 books, you have Jason Asano, the main character, the humor put into it is very much like uh, like he just says something that nobody else understands because he's from Earth. Everyone's like, what? And it's like, oh, you're supposed to laugh. So I would say there are some things that humor-wise become very repetitive. And the first books, they stay long. I listened to all the audiobooks, and each one was 22, 23 plus hours. And that's it, it could have been much shorter. So I would say it could need some edits. At the same time, Dungeon Crawler Carl is a very clear world. I would say from the very beginning, you see that uh, the author, he has a 
very distinct style that is very refined and it is very clear succinct the first books are shorter they eventually get longer and i would say they're a little bloated they need to be shortened a little bit the more later books books four five and six but i would say the prose and writing style and the elements that come into it are just very uh, much more clear in Dungeon Crawler, Dungeon Crawler Carl. So I will have to give the second point to Dungeon Crawler Carl. Our third category in this versus matchup is going to be character development. These are two series that has very different styles, but also some similar weaknesses. He Who Fights With Monsters, you have Jason Asano being the primary character who... Uh, as the story progresses, goes through major developments, major changes in personality, major changes in character. Sorry for the air kicking in in there. And he is a character that is very humorous, but has such a dark element. That's where the title of the series comes from, He Who Fights With Monsters, being Nietzsche's idea of the person fighting monsters being careful about not becoming that monster. And so you see that element all the way through. Uh, the family dynamics, especially in the th second arc where Jason goes back to Earth and the issues with his his brother and his former girlfriend, now his sister-in-law, is something that uh, it's, it feels very rushed and feels like there's not as many dynamics. It feels very one-dimensional. I feel like there's attempts to make it multi-dimensional, but Jason always kind of stays the same character. Now, the, the good thing is that the series at this point has gone on for it's supposed to be like eight years nine years of his life and so you see that change in development in contrast dungeon crawler carl you have carl who in the space of months goes from a kind of lost man who's recently broke up who is in this crazy survival situation very quickly going and becoming an anarchist being one fighting against the establishment so to speak and someone who in that short amount of time has a major shift I would say so these are two different series where you have both characters going through a shift one in a believable manner but there are a lot of weaknesses in it and the other one who has a amazing shift but it's so fast that I have to make this one a wash neither series gets a point for this one our fourth category is going to be plots now he who flies with monsters is a series that have plots in place there's a very much an overarching plot but much of the plot is very character driven and goal oriented in that jason and his friends they are going to be trying to level up to reach higher and higher levels within this magic system and it is a plot that has a lot of good elements and the overarching universe defining plot is very interesting and very well built i would say with having the uh on palamastus having the gods but then also having the uh the the reaper and the celestial book and the phoenix and everybody uh who are the the upper level of um forgetting the name right at this moment but the upper level of gods of the ascendant beings and it is something that with magic breaking down on earth has a very interesting thing so each arc has some really interesting plots and it's very good and believable uh, on the other hand you have dungeon crawl carl which is a very straightforward plot which is just carl and his uh, his animal associate and the friends trying to just survive as long as possible and reaching a point where they can escape the dungeon alive and free but within that you have the alien politics within that you have the internal strife that rises up between the different survivors as they're trying to survive in these horrible conditions where they're being pitted against each other for the universe's entertainment and within that plot you have a overarching goal and process that just seems a little more down to earth so on one hand you have Hugh Feistus monsters with a universe defining very very much within like an rpg style plot and in dungeon crawler carl you have such a unique situation and plot surrounding that situation for me i have to give plot to dungeon crawler carl, carl but it is a very close race at that point our next category is going to be the magic system and oh boy is this where he who fights with monsters shines matt Dinneman, he did uh, sorry uh, Travis Deverell, he did an amazing job in He Who Fights With Monsters with creating a magic system that is very interesting to read about. I'll say with the audiobooks, the 
magic stats became very repetitive and very much where I would try to skip through, um, especially if I did a reread because it just got very monotonous. But that aside, the magic system being where you have these people who can take essences and through rituals, you're able to take these essences and be able to get certain core essences. You get three certain essences. Like Jason, he has the dark, the sin, and the blood essence, and they awaken a fourth essence, which is the doom essence. I think I have that all right. And then after that, you then find awakening stones, and these are gonna have different levels of trying to awaken certain abilities. You train up and then level up, and there's a leveling up system that's tied to the economy of the world of Palamastus, and that is the, you have the, the iron tier, which you have iron spirit coins that you can consume or use uh, for different means. You then have bronze and then silver and then gold, and then diamond is the top tier that becomes almost godlike, in a sense, definitely at least immortal. And it is a very fascinating magic system where you have magic coalescing in monsters that these, this adventure society, which is hand in hand helping to govern the, the nations on Palamasus, this world that Jason Asano wakes up on and learns to survive in and then thrive in, it is a very engaging system that you then see Jason go to Earth where magic is awakening and then back. And it's a, a very engaging system that is very unique and you can see where it remains fresh as you have new abilities coming to light and it gives a lot of freedom to the author and then the reader to be able to engage in this material. Now, Dungeon Crawler Carl is where you have this AI system that has been put in place to run the dungeon that all of Earth's survivors, I think there's about 10 million that survived the initial invasion and make it into the dungeon. And they then are, through a process, able to level up. This AI has set up a system within them that they have a heads-up display that's both uh, both of these series. And it's very common, I guess, in the lit RPG genre to have this type of HUD head-up display system where you can see your, cat, your inventory and your abilities and chat and all these things. And in Dungeon Crawler Carl, you have that system where you're leveling up and... Uh, getting new abilities, new classes, new rankings, you have inventories and getting different equipment that you can then customize and you have the the gods which are actually like avatars that people from the universe can step in and pay to be able to control. It's, it's an amazingly intricate and, and interesting system. My problem with it in Dungeon Crawler Carl is Matt Dimon did an amazing job writing Dungeon Crawler Carl, but I feel like the characters level up so fast there's almost not a, there isn't a level of buy-in with the level up as much, that's just my personal take, that where you feel the grind of Jason Asano and his friends trying to level up and achieve their abilities to be able to make a difference and save the world, whereas in Dungeon Crawler Carl, you have the leveling up, but it's so rapid that it almost loses, it, it creates too much of a soft system that you can kind of get the characters out of situations. And so for this, I will have to say, He Who Fights With Monsters has such an amazing, engaging system. Not that Dungeon Crawl Carl is bad, but for me, He Who Fights With Monsters takes this one. Our next category is going to be supporting cast and villains. So let's start with Dungeon Crawler Carl. We have Carl and his characters established as him being a... Uh, a boat mechanic, a former Coast Guardsman who is living up in Seattle, uh, who has recently broken up with his girlfriend Beatrice, who is trying to figure out a way to keep this cat that's a show cat that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, getting sucked into this world, and he is the central character. So the supporting cast, you have Princess Donut, I do not remember her full name at all, I doubt anybody does, uh, but you have this Persian show cat who all of a sudden through coming into this dungeon is able to get a personality and awaken and be a sentient being and she becomes an amazing central character to this story and you see her and Carl's relationship just flourishing even to the point where later when Beatrice is revealed to be alive and you have Princess Donut basically turning on Beatrice it's there's a lot of amazing writing and amazing prose within Princess Donuts the character. You also have Mordecai, who's kind of the dungeon master, becomes their friend and mentor. You have a bunch of other support characters that come alongside, but there is a smaller cast surrounding Carl, at least in terms of understanding and realizing who they are. 
that you don't have as much of a buy-in in these characters uh, that are alongside Carl. On the other side, you have, in He Who Finds Those Monsters, you have Jason Asano, this, this, uh, this office supply clerk manager who is sucked into this new world, who, wakes, who awakens with nothing, literally no money, no clothes, no hair on his body, and is sucked into this world and is very quickly able to join a group of adventurers who become like family. You have Rufus, the swordsman, whose family uh, runs a school, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and you have Gary the Lion Man. You have Farah, uh, who is basically a lava cannon. Uh, and their constructs and the teaching that they give him to help guide him and resource him and, and help him to survive. And then he makes friends along the way, like uh, Jory, who's the, the medical uh, person who is willing to face down an entire church and God system to be able to try to just help people. You have um, other characters who are coming into the team. You have, uh, you have Humphrey, who's an amazing friend. You have, uh, you have uh, Sophie. You have... Uh, um, Wow, it's late tonight. Um, Sophie, Beatrice, no, that's not right. Belinda, <laughs> that's who we're talking about. You have all of these characters who come along, and we're not even out of the first couple books that you have very realized characters with individual emotions, strengths, weaknesses, wants, desires, goals, and it becomes very well realized. And it is so engaging and in fact I had uh, on one of my uh, one of my videos where I actually reviewed he who fights with monsters um, this individual said that I could talk about it that he said in his in the comments in our conversation that this series is one that just really touched him deeply in the character development and the relationships and the humor and just the love that you sense between Jason and these new friends and it's amazing that you can take something like a lit RPG book that is honestly very ridiculous in nature and you have such deep characters created that they do touch heartstrings and memories of us as readers. And jumping into the villain side of things, I would say that in a in a nutshell, He Who Fights With Monsters has some very interesting villains, but they are outside of the builder who is a celestial being who, that's probably not the right word, but that's all I can think of at this moment, that has his motivations and he's definitely a little on the weak side and in dungeon crawler carl you have the different aliens you have the ai system that's basically breaking down uh and is very interesting in his uh in his character in the series uh and neither one of these series majorly has the greatest of villains i would say they both are very goal oriented and system oriented and relationship oriented so without having a clear villain victor it comes back to supporting cast and i would say he who fights with monsters clearly takes that for this point our next category and this is going to be related into writing style and world building and character development all and that is going to be the humor of the books now when we come to the humor of these books I will say that both sides have elements of pop culture references, both sides have elements of circumstantial humor that comes into it, and He Who Fights With Monsters, I would say uh, Travis Deverell has some really, really funny elements that come into it, but as I mentioned before, there's a lot of circumstantial where the responses of the people in this magic world where they're just like, what are you talking about? It's the, the humor's in them not knowing what Jason's talking about and us knowing, but it gets a little repetitive and old as time goes on. On the Dungeon Crawler Carl side, you almost have absurdism to the level of Terry Pratchett's Discworld in the horror elements meeting, the humor elements meeting, pop culture meeting, everything, and it is so funny at times i literally would be driving to work listening to the audiobooks of dungeon crawler carl and i would be laughing to the point of tears at some of the things that would come up and the responses and the situations and i would say very clearly for humor this is very subjective but for me dungeon crawler carl takes the humor point At this point, given the wash that was character development, we are tied three to three. And so our final point, I want to bring in action and plot twists. Action 
and plot twists. And if you've read these series, you know that both of these series are chock full of amazing action and really good plot twists. In terms of action, He Who Fights with Monsters, the system of magic, the system of action and of, of fighting is very engaging. You go along and I think some of my favorite elements of action in He Who Fights with Monsters is in the beginning books. And especially seeing Jason figuring out his fighting style, being a affliction skirmisher specialist who is doing these amazing things that other people have never seen because of his skill set and what he is given with his familiars. And that's a whole thing with the familiars. Uh, and the action sequences are amazing, especially when you add in some of the twists of what the monsters bring to it. And especially seeing Jason being willing to put himself out there to save people. Uh, and... I would say with the magic system and everything, it's amazing action sequences that do get a little repetitive as they go, but especially given the length of these books, but the action is definitely something that is very engaging in the He Who Finds With Monsters universe. In Dungeon Crawler Carl, you have action that is based around this AI system with a fantasy element with the universe watching and they're able to vote on and be able to actually pay for supplies and elements and things that come in and then Carl is going to be facing that against other people who are trying to stop him from achieving his quest. And the action is very visceral, visceral and with the horror element that is just, ugh. if you've read the Nightmare Train section of the uh, of Dungeon Caller Carl, I can't remember the name of the book at this moment, but the I'll just say the Nightmare Train, and if you've read it, you know what I mean, that was so viscerally horrifying to the point of like Resident Evil levels that it just was insanely complicated, insanely written, and the action was very unique. And so for action, both of these take it, but for plot twists, if that is the defining moment of these series, and as I've said, if you took these first books of the series, Dungeon Crawler Carl would take it handily, but as the series goes on, He Who Fights with Monsters just gets better and better and better. But I would say, for plot twists, that Matt Deverell in Dungeon Crawler, Dungeon Crawler Carl has the most amazing plot twists that just hook the reader and pulls in where you think that we're going this direction and there's a 180 to say this is what we have to do. Whether it is the stupidity of other people in the dungeon to the aliens that are watching to the talk shows that they're being brought on to to... Whatever it is, you are getting sucked into this world and you don't know where Matt Denham is going with this story, but you know that he is going to take you on an amazing journey in this series. And I cannot wait for the next books to come out. Uh, I don't even know when the next book is coming out, but I cannot wait for the next Dungeon Crawl Crawler Carl book. And since for plot twist, Dungeon Crawler Carl takes it, for this versus match, I have to say that the better series, not better, but I would say the more realized and a little more developed series that is a little more engaging in the long run is Dungeon Crawler Carl. <laughs> That is not saying He Who Finds With Monsters is bad, it's an amazing series, but for me, I have to say, by a hair, by a hair, if He Who Fights With Monsters is a B, Dungeon Crawler Carl is a B plus. It is that close within the ranking of these two books. Now, maybe you agree with me, maybe you completely disagree with me. That is completely fine, I would love to hear your thoughts and takes on this uh, this versus battle. If you like this format, I have many other ideas for books and series that could face off, characters that could face off in terms of which is a better realized character. So if you like this style, what I have to say, this is very subjective, but I love talking about stories. I love talking about books. I would really appreciate it if you liked, comment, subscribed. And if you like the content we talked about, uh, these two videos up here are the reviews that I did of the first books of these two series. So check those out if you will. Like, comment, subscribe. Have an amazing day. Go read some good stories. God bless. We'll talk to you later.